ان شاء الله عبد الواحد فيرسون بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته such a great pleasure to come up here and the first thing to do is take shahada from a new sister entering islam mashallah it reminds me of the day when i had to do that myself which is close to 25 years ago by now by the endless grace of allah azza wa jalla let me first reiterate a few things because not so long ago my country became the focal point of interest on Muslim matters in the world, not because of anything good, but because we had a newspaper bringing deep and profound insult to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I don't think I have to tell you how much it hurt to be actually a citizen of that country knowing that my country all of a sudden became in the eyes of the Muslim the enemy let me make it clear to you though although I'm sure all of you know that that actually who did this was just a small group of people and we will find them wherever we go we will find people who hate Islam, we will find people who will do anything to defile Islam. What we should know, nevertheless, is that a lot of good came out of this incident. They have plans, and Allah has plans, and Allah is the best of planners. So now we see people coming into Islam in Denmark in numbers that we have never seen before. When I took Shahada nearly 25 years ago, we were only about 10 or 15 of original Danish Muslims. Today, there are thousands and thousands of Muslims of Danish origin. And every week, And every week I have coming into my office two, three or four people to take shahad at Islam. Alhamdulillah. So they thought that by defiling our noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by throwing dirt on Islam, they could turn the tide. But that was not the case. We turned the tide on them, Allah turned the tide on them, and today, mashallah, we see a lot of good coming out of this whole incident, right back where it started. Alhamdulillah. Now, seeing this, and being myself a European, there's an issue which keeps in my heart and in my mind becoming more and more important which is expressing Islam into the European mindset. That could be the American mindset too. For many years I was sitting in the mosque every Friday, listening to the Imam giving his khutbah in Arabic or in Urdu or in Turkish or in Albanian and I did not understand one word of what was being said. Alhamdulillah, we were there for the khutbah and we listened attentively, many of us not understanding one word, but slowly realizing that we have to do things a slight bit differently. For that reason, a number of good brothers and sisters appointed me their Imam 10 years ago. I don't think I qualify for that position, but they gave me, they put the obligation upon me and I've had to lift it ever since. And I've realized the importance of doing exactly that. Because our youngsters, even the children of Pakistani emigrants, of Arab emigrants, of Somali emigrants, of Albanian emigrants, whatever, 
they do not understand their mother language. They need things to happen in the language of the country where they are born and raised. And this is a tremendous obligation upon us as Muslims that we take this task very, very seriously. Because if we don't address, especially our young uh, generation, in a language with which they're familiar the whole way, and on a level on which they can understand, then we're not going to level with them. So I urge to you, brothers and sisters, especially brothers and sisters from the traditional Muslim world, be aware that this is happening. Be aware that the whole of Europe has to have things happening in the languages of their country. And it's of extreme importance that we find the support from all of the old Muslim countries. It's extremely important. Sorry, I'm, uh, I tend to move around, yeah. <laughs> it's extremely important that we have the support coming in, recognizing that the old organizations established by the immigrants, they have their task to do. And I will in no way belittle the task that they have been doing and that they still have to do in Arabic, in Turkish, in Somali, in Urdu, in Bengali, in whatever else language. They have to do that because we have a whole generation of immigrants who need to hear their Imam speak in those languages. But we have a whole new generation who need it to happen in their native language, which could be English, Dutch, French, Italian, Danish, German, whatever. If we do not take this task very seriously, brothers and sisters, we're gonna look at a lot more trouble than what we're looking at already. Because then we will not just have the outsiders turn on us, then we will have our insiders turn on us too. So, there is a reason when Allah sends this sister that we have just seen take her shahada here, when Allah lets people like me and other people of European origin come to Islam, there's a reason for that. And we should take it as it is. Allah did not create us one tribe or one nation. He created us, as He says in the Quran, in tribes and nations so we can learn from each other. And we have to recognize that there's a reason for Him sending Islam into the heart of Europe and that we who are here now as Muslims, we have a job to do. Roll up your sleeves, get to work. We have work to do out there and we all have to lift our share of it. Wa jazakumullah khairan wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.